Alright guys, what's up? Welcome back to the third video here in this tutorial of the Lumberjack Underground. In this episode, we are going to be going over the game loop. So let's jump right in, go over to your game.js file. And inside of this module, what we we'll want to do is create another function, and we'll call this run. Set it equal to a function. And we are going to be passing in from up here the data that we've created. And this is where we're going to be creating the basic game loop. Now the game loop is the same game loop I've been using in most all of my games. So if you've already passed through one of my tutorials, you'll be familiar with this already. But I'm going to go over it real quick. What we're going to do inside of here is I'm going to create a function called the loop. So let's set that variable equal to loop. What happens inside the loop is we call the different update methods. So I'll do game.input. So we need input in a game. Pass in data. I will then call update. Pass in data. And then lastly, I will call render. Pass in data like that. After that, I want to go ahead and set the animation frame to add one each time this goes through. So every time the loop goes through, we add a tick to our animation frame. And this way, this is passed into our data, so globally we're able to pass that around and um, know which tick we're on throughout the game. Lastly, if you've seen this before, I hope, it is the window.requestAnimation frame what this does is it is going to recursively call our loop function here over and over every 16.7 milliseconds or minimum minimal 16.7 millisecond if they have a slow computer this will get hit as soon as possible but it will always wait at least 16.7 milliseconds so that we can get the 60 frames per second so what I'll go ahead is just call loop down here instantiate it so now our game loops gonna run through it's gonna hit our input so we first get the input from the user then we're going to update so we're going to do a movement animation and then we're going to actually draw it to the screen and now this order is super important the reason being is when you think about in the game you are getting the input from the user and then you need to um, move the character and animate the character but guess what what happens if the character runs into a wall or something so after that we need to do the physics engine and if it if our physics engine uh, determines that the character ran into a wall, we don't want to draw that to the screen and show the user that the character actually went, ran on the wall. We're going to reverse step it and move them back, and then we'll draw the image on the screen so it looks like the character never actually went through. And I'll explain that more as we go throughout the physics engine or whatnot if you're new to this. But um, let's go ahead. Let's save that. Let's go over. I forgot to do this in the last episode. We need to import our script. So go over to the HTML file, we'll add a source, it's our JS folder, and it's our game.js file. Go ahead and save that, guys, and that is going to be it for this episode. In the next episode, I hope to see you guys over there. Whoops, this is not supposed to be closed since we're in an object here, it'll be a comma. But in the next episode, we are going to go over the input um, part of this course. So I think we're going to do the init function on input. So, yeah, I hope to see you guys over there. Uh, we're cruising through, and we are done with episode three. Later.